Hello everyone, it's Dave and Teddy here bringing you this week's Rocket Lab updates. Uh, who am I kidding though? Teddy's really only here to farm for those likes. Uh, hit that like button if you do like Teddy and find him cute. Thank you so much, Teddy. <laughs> okay, we've had a lot of news over the past couple weeks with Rocket Lab that I figured I should get you guys caught up with, as well as, of course, the overall markets have been. Uh, I think the technical term is a absolute shit show. <laughs> and yes, the markets do also play an impact in Rocket Lab stock, so we'll touch on that a little bit. If you're new here and you haven't subscribed already, Teddy would appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button by the end of the video. And if you're not new here, well, those likes and comments help out as well. Okay, let's dive in to this week's Rocket Lab updates. So starting off with the stock price, it has of course been a wild ride. I feel like I've aged about 10 years over the last two weeks <laughs> just watching the crazy madness in the stock market and the massive swings up and down. Wouldn't mind one day of just completely flat, that would be all right with me. But anyway, I do feel like despite all that, we have held up pretty well. This is Rocket Lab speaking over the last month. In fact, I know on a three month basis, yes, we're down, but honestly, sitting at 1968 today after all the craziness that's been going on lately in the markets, not too shabby really, and we are up on a one month basis. So that is nice to see as well. Obviously, a lot of this is being driven by the Trump administration tariff talks and the big cancellation, or I should say delay on tariffs for 90 days by that administration as they try to make some deals, it looks like. So I wouldn't say we're out of the woods on this whole thing. In fact, they just upped the amount of tariffs or percent that they're gonna be putting on Chinese goods. So that trade war very much continues, but at least they are looking to make some deals with other countries so it's not just complete all out trade war. Um, don't think we're out of the woods. You know, 90 days is not over. It's just a reprieve and it doesn't even include China. So. Uh, I think the volatility will continue. Personally, I don't know if we've hit the bottom or not, and Rocket Lab will very much be impacted by whatever the president happens to tweet on a given day about tariffs or buying stocks or whatever. Um, and that's just how it's going to be until we have a little bit more certainty around these issues, I think. But so far, Rocket Lab has weathered the storm fairly well. Uh, hopefully, some of you guys were able to pick up shares in the 15s or, you know, get some deals if you were looking to buy already. Anyway, uh, the big news we had recently, now this is a little bit older now, but I haven't talked about it yet on the channel, so I did want to cover it closely because it is a really big deal, is that Rocket Lab has reached a new milestone on the path to launch for Neutron, and Stage 2 qualification is now complete, which proves the stage's design, operations, and readiness for flight. So... Basically, the, the stage, the design they have for it has withstood all the testing that they need it to withstand. And in terms of the amount of pressures and things like that, it will go under in mission. And the qualification campaign tests have included 1,300,000 plus pounds of force intention load applied to the carbon composite structure, flight-like operations combining flight software, avionics, GNC systems and more performed in cryogenic conditions as well as pressurization and proof testing at 125% of maximum operating pressure and mechanical loads. So they pushed this thing 25% beyond what it should ever have to deal with in a regular mission. So it should be quite safe for regular mission parameters. Uh, very exciting news for Rocket Lab's Neutron and the progress on getting towards that first flight. Taking a quick look at the Neutron webpage in Rocket Lab's path to liftoff, if we check out what's been updated now, we should find that yes, stage two has officially been qualified and has a green dot next to it now. So the things that are remaining are flight mechanism program tests, which is, you know, opening and closing those mechanisms from what I understand. Uh, yeah, fairing separation systems and all that kind of stuff. 
engine qualification as that campaign remains underway at Stennis, all the various tests going with Archimedes. And in fact, they opened up a second production cell for, or a second testing cell, I should say, for Archimedes at Stennis so they could test multiple engines simultaneously. Stage one qualification testing, so similar to the stage two testing, which is now complete, they need to qualify stage one for flight and ensure that that design meets the expectations in terms of pressures, loads, and all that kind of stuff. And then Launch Complex 3 construction being complete. We've seen some good signs on that front as well. Uh, regulatory approvals, static fires, and finally wet dress rehearsal and launch. Oh, of course, and vehicle integration, but that goes without saying, I would say. So still a lot of steps to go and... Uh, Clearly, you know, we're not going to be launching in a matter of months or like June when they were originally saying. I do think we're looking towards the end of the year at this point, given the amount of items we have left. I would say, you know, if I had to guess, maybe I'm thinking November, December at this point. Uh, let me know your guesses down below. Of course, you know, I'm just guessing. I don't have any insider info here, but that's just what I'm thinking right now. Personally, if they get this launch off by the end of the year, or I should say as long as they get the launch off by the end of the year, I will be very happy and will be an amazing milestone for the company. So continuing on, there was the 40th annual Space Symposium going on this past week with a lot of stuff at the conference. We can see Adam Spice there in the background. And they had the governor visiting their booth talking to Rocket Lab about the continued growth in the company so just kind of highlighting the the networking going on at the space symposium let me know if you guys were there i know a few people out there did visit and shared pictures uh interested of course to see and hear anything from that event at the event rocket lab did show off their new five newton meter second i believe it's called a uh, reaction wheel which is slightly smaller than the big one for the mystery commercial customer. I do think this one is the one that will be used on their recently announced Flatolite platform, but don't quote me on that. So interesting to see pictures of that reaction wheel as well. We did get an announcement that Rocket Lab is introducing Starray, I guess is how you pronounce it, or Star Ray, a customizable solar array solution for satellites. This is a pre-engineered solution providing customizable solar arrays to meet the diverse power needs of satellites orbiting in any orbital condition. Can be configured in one, two, three, or four panels depending on your needs. Uh, and that's per wing, so like three panels on each wing here, two, one, or four here, three, two, one, of course. Uh, they have two different kind of models, T-Star or L-Star. T-Star is for higher power satellites and L-Star for lower mass satellites. So I guess my take on this is they're basically kind of standardizing this uh, solar product and making it easier for pr prospective clients to purchase solar and fit it to their satellite and their needs. Um, that at least is my take on it, but always interested to hear from solar experts. And of course, they are expanding aggressively with their Solero and solar product. We did hear that they got those grants from the government via the CHIPS Act to expand in New Mexico, I was believe, their manufacturing. And uh, yeah, hopefully their solar will continue to spool up. They also did announce a, quite a large contract recently on that front. So everything is looking good as far as I'm concerned for the solar part of the business. Okay, so continuing on, there was an announcement from Beyond Gravity that they are partnering with Rocket Lab to provide pre-integration avionics and flight software for satellite constellation. Satellite constellations, this provides customers with an integrated flight-ready avionics and ground operations package. So Rocket Lab tweeting back that they are excited to expand their end-to-end -end space offerings with trusted partner like Beyond Gravity. So hopefully this partnership leads to more business for Rocket Lab's software systems, which I have to imagine uh, software sales tend to be very high margin. Once you've developed the software, you just kind of have to sell it. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much all there is to it. So 
Another interview that was up recently, I always highly recommend the Off Nominal podcast. They get a lot more technical. They're basically a bunch of space fans there talking about various space issues, not really so much on the investing side of things. But they had an interesting interview with Rocket Lab's VP of Space System, Richard French, who is a very smart guy, talking a lot about Rocket Lab's proposal and thoughts on Mars sample return, as well as space systems in general, and just the company. And if you want to learn a little bit more about the technical side of things, hear an insider talk about the industry and hear his thoughts, uh, I do think it was worth a listen. I certainly did enjoy it and left me feeling uh, a little bit more optimistic about, you know, Rocket Lab's chances for Mars Sample Return to participate in that. So next up, Rocket Lab announced their expanded radio product lineup for reliable command and control. This is their Frontier Radio, which includes a suite of space-grade RF communication systems available in, available in the L, S, C, X, and K, A band. So space systems, as I've said many times, always has multiple things going on. Another announcement here of Rocket Lab refining upon and continuing to improve their radio communication systems. This was adapted originally from Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratories, Frontier Light Radio, and Rocket Lab uh, has a agreement in place with them to basically commercialize it from what I understand. So this is of course part of Rocket Lab's vertically integrated subsystems and components and they are compatible with the Deep Space Network which is important obviously for NASA missions and other global ground stations. So um, yeah, just another little expansion on Rocket Lab Space Systems, which continues to just build upon a great strength and, you know, is three quarters plus of Rocket Lab's revenue at this point and really the unsung hero of the entire company. Next up, we do have an analyst update here. Cantor Fitzgerald maintains their Rocket Lab stock coverage with a $24 price target. Their analyst, Andre Shepard, reaffirmed a positive stance on Rocket Lab, maintaining an overweight rating and a $24 price target for the company's shares, which obviously is fairly bullish for today. We're trading at around 19 something. Uh, current analyst targets for Rocket Lab range from 1435 to 33, so quite a wide range. And generally, I don't put a huge amount of stock in what the analysts are thinking, but uh, it is worth something, I guess. So, you know, interesting to see that. Interestingly, the analyst did highlight that over 70% of Rocket Lab's supply chain is domestically sourced, which could be advantageous in the event of trade wars and tariffs because they wouldn't get tariffed on items that they manufacture within the United States and sell to the United States. So that could be a uh, potential strength, of course, you know, so much still up in the air when it comes to those tariffs. Next up, we did have a story that Germany may in fact want to work on their own defense satellite constellation. And I think we're going to see more and more of this around the world as countries really look to basically rely less on America and have their own assets up there. So I guess the more constellations being built, the more potential customers Rocket Lab could have. They did just acquire a German company, Maneric, which has a key piece of technology, the optical communication terminals for a lot of these satellites so I have to imagine that that would be a pretty good potential fit for Maneric although less bullish if there were a trade war with Germany in terms of selling other components to them like being even a prime contractor or solar or any of the other components that are built in the USA. And then of course big news is that the SDA announced they're seeking industry proposals for Tranche 3 tracking layer of the proliferated war fighter, uh, whatever, proliferated war fighter, basically the SDA constellation. So Tranche 2 Rocket Lab did get awarded 18 satellites for the transport layer. And now this is tracking layer, which is different than transport layer. Uh, and you have to keep in mind, these satellites are actually more expensive than transport layer satellites. I know it's very confusion. You have very confusing. You have multiple tranches. You have multiple layers within these tranches. So the tracking layer is for basically tracking missiles and stuff like that. More advanced satellites, more expensive. I do wonder if Rocket Lab will submit a proposal for this and break into the tracking layer and not just the transport layer for 
four, tranche three. Try to say that three times fast. <laughs> anyway, I really hope they do. It could be a massive contract for them if they do land that. And of course, remember we did hear news stories not too long ago saying that higher up there even talking about potentially canceling Tranche 3 completely, which would be devastating in my opinion to Rocket Lab and a lot of the smaller space companies out there. So I really hope that doesn't happen. Maybe this is a sign that things are headed in the right, right direction. Of course, this could just be SDA doing business as usual and those discussions about canceling the entire thing still happening at a higher level, but it's all up in the air. Uh, I wouldn't count your chickens before they've hatched for tranche three until contracts are signed. Up until that point, I guess it's always possible that things get canceled. Personally, I think we've seen that backlog stay around the 1 billion level for long enough, and I am very much ready for the next leg up in terms of the size of Rocket Lab's backlog. Okay, just a couple quick items to, before, to close out the news. From the, from the Space Symposium, call me Curtis who is a frequent member of the Rocket Lab investor community, was participating and was able to share with us a picture of the Mineric Condor Mark III uh, optical terminal. So these are planned to fly on the SDA communication satellites and is the prime product of the company Rocket Lab is acquiring. And what caught me off guard is just how big these things were. I've seen pictures on their website, renders and stuff like that, but seeing it with a person next to it for scale, I have to say it looks a lot bigger than I anticipated and, you know, pretty heavy duty, really. Looking at a couple pictures Tran posted of the Flatolite with where these terminals would sit on that gives you a sense of scale in terms of just how large each flatolite could potentially be. Uh, I do think, because this render was probably made before that acquisition was announced, this is probably more of just a generic placeholder as opposed to the actual Mineric terminal sitting in there. But uh, just a sense of scale, if it's anywhere close to being the size of the Condor Mark III, these flatolites are actually a lot bigger than I was originally thinking and giving them credit for, because, uh, yeah, that is quite large compared to the person that we had standing next to it. So those are all the Rocket Lab news stories I have for you over the past couple weeks. Let me know which one you thought was the most interesting, your thoughts on any of them, and if there was anything that I did miss that you think is noteworthy, always interested in continuing the conversation down below. Hope you guys are handling the recent market volatility okay and aren't getting margin called or anything like that. Let me know of any trades. Always interested about that as well. And I hope you have a great day, a great rest of the week. I will see you for the next video. And by the way, Teddy says hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, see you in the next one. Bye for now.